morning, everybody. This is uh, Jeff Copertet with eSIMS Engineering. We're going to go ahead today and talk about this uh, Project 241 in the POE curriculum, which is the Structural Design Bridge Designer Project. And we're going to go ahead and just kind of walk through some of the software features and some of the things that you'll be working on uh, in this project. Uh, currently behind me, I just want to let you know that I do have a class that's in that's uh, basically started this project right away, and we're making this video now to kind of walk through the software so they have a reference point as well as you. So uh, we're going to go ahead and start with the opening the Bridge Designer program. I've got the 2016 version. It really doesn't matter what year you have. Most of the programs are pretty much identical. Um, the latest version, and all these are free, by the way. You can certainly just uh, do a web search and you can find this Bridge Designer program. Uh, you may have the older version, which is the West Point Bridge Designer, um, I, but they've since dropped the name off of that and just called it Bridge Designer 2016 in this case. So we hit OK. And this takes us to the uh, design wizard, uh, to, or setup wizard, really. So it's going to talk about in this assignment, we have to talk about what kinds of uh, changes to your uh, site setup are you going to make so that uh, your cost can be as effective as possible. Obviously, the main cost is going to be the creation of the bridge and the truss, but the other things you want to consider are what are the site costs? What are the things that you uh, have to do ahead of time before you make your uh, before you make your uh, bridge? So, uh, elevation view and design cross-section, kind of talking about that. And then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to decide whether or not you're going to be participating in a contest. In this project, you're not, so you just hit no or, or leave it at that and just go to next. Now, here's where you're going to be playing with the configuration. Now, currently, right now, the way this is configured uh, by default is you have a maximum height elevation of 24 meters. You're given standard regular abutments, no piers, and no anchorages. That means your current site cost is $63,200. Now, if you start playing with these settings, you're going to see the site cost change in response to that. So one of the things you'll do, and let me just uh, open up my Word document of this, is, uh, and this is also on your PLTW website, of course, is the fifth item is you have to fill in what the site cost, what happens to the site cost as you change certain factors. So you'll be playing with the deck elevation first, then you'll be playing with the abutments, and then you'll be playing with the piers, and then lastly you'll, pay, you'll play with the cable anchorages, and you would keep other settings identical in that sense. So let's start with the deck elevation cost. So here's your 24 meters, right? So if I make this change to say 12 meters, just to give you one of the examples, you'll notice that the site cost increases. And the reason why is because look at all the land they have to excavate to get the bridge to be that height. So while your span is shorter, your uh, cost is going to go up because of the land that you have to do that. So you know you would have to just make the changes to all those other things and then fill in the site cost that happens. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the arch abutment cost impact. So if I go to here and I try to uh, change that uh, with the arch abutments, in this case using this, and then selecting different heights for here, again, you get a site cost difference in each of those cases, right? So you can use standard abutments, you can use arch abutments. Now ultimately, it'll be up to you to decide which of the um, configurations you want to use, but um, for considerations for cost, you do want to just play with each of the settings and just kind of see how that impacts the cost. And then you would do the same thing with the cable anchorages, and you would do the same thing for the uh, for the cost of um, of using cable anchorages and piers. Right. So once you do all of that, then uh, we're gonna just for this video, we're just gonna use the default settings. The other things you'll then have to have to decide is whether you're going to choose to have medium strength concrete or high strength concrete. Uh, understanding, of course, that using high strength concrete will definitely make your bridge stronger, but notice that the site cost does increase when you choose to use that. So you would fill that in as well. And then whether you're going to be using uh, standards or permit loads, uh, those are not really site considerations. You actually can change this later, but um, permit loads basically allow you to use the entire bridge in one direction uh, for a higher weight um, higher weight truck. So in this case you can keep it at standard but like I said you can change that later. So we hit next and then you can also select a template to start with. Uh, because of this video uh, I want I will start with a with a template, uh, the Pratt through truss and then I will uh, leave that blank for now and then we can finish and then it will open up our selections. So now in this window and I want to show this to you uh, for again the main part of this investigation uh, oops, the Sorry, main part of this investigation is the uh, trying to minimize of cost. 
But in order to do that and fully understand how cost affects this bridge, you will have to um, understand the cost of the members and the materials and whether you choose to use solid bars or hollow tubes for some of your members. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and just draw in here a carbon steel solid bar and I'm going to attach it to this uh, joint here and then we'll draw it on, I'm sorry, oops, I forgot to switch to the member, and we'll draw it on from here to here. Okay, so we have to add the joints first, of course. So there's a joint. I'll put a joint here. Those joints are already existing. So if I draw from here to here, there we go. Okay, so I just put one bar in there just so you can kind of see uh, what we can do with that. Now, what we'll, you'll notice over here is once we have a list of members here, we are given this uh, sort of material type, which in this case is carbon steel. And then you have a, uh, it's a bar, it's 140 millimeters in size and a 5.66 meters in length. Now size in this case referring to cross section and thickness, uh, it's slenderness in here. Now if I switch and tab over to the member details, you'll notice here that I have a little bit more information. And one of the things that you'll be looking at is what kind of uh, factors are going into this. So now if I uh, choose a 160 millimeter bar, which in this case, if I switch that to that, uh, this is based on the uh, current setting that is given to you in the document when you're doing the uh, member analysis. I'll show that to you here as well. If we got to scroll all the way down to number 14, right? So the member properties window we're talking about now, this is the part that's gonna take a little bit of time to start filling out. So you're gonna keep the cross section size 160 millimeters. You're gonna keep it as a solid bar, but you're gonna play with the material chain uh, as well. So carbon steel is your default material, but you also can choose to use high strength uh, low alloy steel and quenched and tempered steel. You can imagine, of course, that the uh, cost is going to change for each of those. So you'll notice here, member properties. Uh, on the document, it asks you to fill in its yield stress, its modulus elasticity, its mass density, its moment of inertia, and its cost per meter. So all of those all that information is on this window right here. Here's your yield stress, here's your modulus elasticity, here's your mass density, uh, here's your moment of inertia, and here's your cost per meter, right? In this case, it's $864.13 per meter. So that means the total cost of this member based on these factors is $4,888.25. It's just for one member, right? So if I change that member to high strength alloy steel, you'll notice that the cost goes up. We get different properties as well. And then we also, if I go to quench and tempered, I get again a change of cost and a change of that. So obviously the values go up, but so does the cost. So you'll play with all of those settings. Uh, another section will have you keeping it as carbon steel, but trying to check out what it would be like as a hollow tube. Um, compared to a solid bar. And then the third one will have you play with the cross-section size. In this case, you can choose to use 30 by 30. That's your smallest available uh, one. And then you can go all the way up to 500 millimeters. Uh, in that. And of course, graphically, it'll also change as well uh, on those. So you can uh, play with all of those settings and get your member cost and all of that. And then when you have a bridge that's all set and designed, um, you end up with a uh, you end up with a member analysis. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and try to design. I'm going to erase this member though. I'm going to go ahead and try to design a very straightforward solid bar truss uh, with a 160 millimeter diameter bars. Hopefully it will not collapse under its own weight. Um, I'll go ahead and just fill this in right now. And I'm going to uh, just pause and kind of skip this part here for you guys. Okay, so I, I filled in most of the uh, template on this one here. I left one blank on purpose, and you'll notice right here. And I want to show you why I did that. If I switch over to simulation mode, it's going to give me a warning and say that it's unstable because I have a rectangle instead of a triangle. Um, and it gives you a couple of examples that you can kind of look at and see why uh, certain things may have instability issues and most of the time it's because you don't have uh, you don't have all triangles so here you'll notice right here I've got this parallelogram here just because I forgot to fill in this one item here now if I go to simulation mode all right it looks like the bridge yeah see the bridge is gonna fail in that instance right so it was able to get to uh, at least onto the bridge but then it failed uh, once the truck was loaded on so in this case right we go back here and then we got look at the simulation and we can see that we had one two three four five six seven members fail right so a four hundred sixteen thousand dollar bridge uh, is not 
passable. And also notice that over here on the member list, we end up with a uh, report of what all of the members experienced on here. And this is what's going to help you economize and optimize your design. So you'll notice here that all of the members that failed had a compression force strength ratio greater than one. And so your target when you're designing your bridge is to make these ratios as close to one as possible while, of course, minimizing costs. You notice I have a lot of members here that had zero <coughs> compression force strength, so they didn't do as much, but also notice that they had tensile strength as well. So um, you got to keep in, keep in mind that sometimes you're going to have uh, members that will fail under compression, members that will fail under tension. So you would pay attention to both of these numbers when you're designing your bridge. So in this case, I would have to make these bars stronger uh, in order to hold uh, or change my design, of course, in order to hold a bridge. So um, when you are creating this project, uh, you're going to want to optimize that cost as much as possible. And of course, you would start with your own template. And remember, you were restricted to 50 joints and 120 members. And of course, this template is well under that. So I hope this introduction helped you. I hope this project goes successfully for you. I have seen a sub $200,000 bridge, just saying. So uh, I would love to see what you guys come up with as well and to hear what your costs are for this project. So I hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope that you don't forget to be awesome. Take care.